In places where speeds are slow and sight lines are short, you don't need signals to be on high masts. That's when dwarf signals are used, short ones. At Lacucci, a dwarf signal protects the south end of the siding. Both the seaboard and the Atlantic coastline use these short signals on many of their sidings for ease of maintenance, to avoid confusion at night, and as indicators of a slow speed route. Many of seaboard and coastline sidings were slow speed tracks. Here on the old Atlantic coastline, the north end of Cherry Siding is guarded by this dwarf signal. You'll also find dwarf signals in yards, another place of slow speeds. At Rockport Yard in Tampa, a dwarf signal protects the turnouts on the Y. At North Y Winston Yard, the yard entrance, a dwarf signal is on a short pole for added visibility around the curve. This signal can display a stop or a restricting. Here at Lee, Florida, on the CSX Tallahassee subdivision, a dwarf signal protects a tail track out of the siding. Speed limit is 10 miles per hour on the tail track, so the dwarf signal is plenty visible to any movement. This signal may be interlocked to the derail only. The tail track out of the siding was most often used for storage or as a local house track. At the stem of the Densmore Y in Jacksonville is a kind of hybrid high dwarf signal. It's a full-sized head mounted on a short mast. Here's another feature that's rapidly disappearing on the CSX, the doll arm. This fixed appliance gives one indication. A track intervenes between this signal and the track it governs. In plain English, there's a track between me and the track that I'm controlling. The doll arm often has a blue light on it, but it doesn't have to be lighted. This one at North End Davenport, Florida is one of the last of the blue doll arm signals still working on the Florida A-Line. Doll arms are most often found at the ends of sidings when a high main line signal is outside of the siding track and a dwarf signal protects the siding. Sometimes a fill or a bridge prevents a large signal installation next to the main line, so the doll arm did the explaining. Many doll arms don't have lights at all, just finials, the pointy thing on the top, like this one on the ex-ACL main at South End Auburndale, Florida. Let's go back to South Lee on the Tallahassee subdivision. On the high mast, a doll arm indicates there's a track between it and the track the signal governs. On the southbound side, there are two signals side by side. The two head signal on the left governs the siding track. The single head signal on the right governs the main track. No need for the doll arm here. The seaboard did its signals this way at sidings and on double track. At Maxville, Florida, on the double track S line was a typical seaboard signal layout, side by side in each direction. Here's one more signal type that combines both automatic block signaling and absolute signaling. In the Ybor City District of Tampa, the XACL main coming out of Tampa Union Station crosses the Tico line streetcar track built in 2002. The A line had no signals here as the CTC ends about a mile up the track at TN Tower. So to protect the at grade crossing, a first come first serve signal was installed an automatic signal that goes green for whichever movement gets there first. Amtrak 91 is coming out of the Tampa station stop and just about the time he comes out on the main, the ABS signal at 14th Street goes green, telling 91 to proceed. 14th Street is unique in that it's the only streetcar diamond on the CSX in Florida and it's both an automatic and absolute signal that is not dispatcher controlled. I hope you've enjoyed our little course on seaboard system signals. For more rail fanning videos, subscribe to me at youtube.com slash distant signal. Thanks for watching. This is Danny Harmon, out.